Hey, welcome back. This is Mr. Kelly. Now we're going to do some graphing calculator questions. Now I was able to do 10 questions in 10 minutes in my first attempt, and then I failed in my second attempt. Today I'm going to try to do five graphing calculator questions in 10 minutes because they take longer because I got to type in all this stuff. All right, here we go. Part B. Again, these are coming out of the CED for AP Precalc. Number 20, the temperature in degrees is given by this function, and they want to know how many hours did it take for the temperature to increase from zero, which is this function, so when did this equal zero, all the way to five. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna plug this into the calculator, we're gonna hit Y equals, oh, by the way, I cleared out my memory, let's review that. Second, we hit the memory, and then we do a little seven, one, two, and then that'll reset your RAM. Don't do this if you have any programs or if it's your calculator, but this is a good thing to do if you get into the testing room, just to make sure you get a, a fresh calculator. All right, here we go. So we're going to do, I'm going to do a little alpha, and then you go to the right, and it makes that fraction. Did you know that? And I'm going to type in this entire function in the top and the entire function in the bottom. And so I double check everything. It seems to be pretty good. I haven't screwed anything up that I know of. And then I'm also down here. I want to know when this is going to equal zero. So while I'm in here, I'm just going to type, uh, what do got, a zero. And then I want to know when it equals five. So I'll put that in Y3. I'll probably have to fix my window here. Let's look at the graph. Oh, wow, look at that. Well, I do not have to fix my window. That is shocking. Actually, I would expect me to have to have had to do that. But look, the red line, ooh, don't go anywhere. The red line is uh, y equals zero. So we wanna know how long it took to go from y equals zero to y equals five. So we need to know that x coordinate. So let's just do that right now. Let's do a second calculate. We wanna know the intersection. So that's choice five. And you gotta make sure you're picking the right functions here. So I am on the red function. That is zero, and then I want to see how it automatically popped up to that one. That's not what I want. I want the blue one, and when I find my guess, it's gonna tell me that x equals 5.42. Check this out. I'm gonna use the store button, and I'm gonna put that in alpha a, and now I don't have to remember that value. Ah, oh, yes I do, because I just, what, what happened here? No, oh, sorry. Let's do this for real. Go to the home screen, hit the x button, then hit store into alpha a. That seemed to work. It was 5.42, right? Remember that? Yeah, that just happened. That was right here. Now we're going to find uh, the function uh, when it equals 5, right? So to do that, it's the same steps. Second, calculate. Uh, what do we want? The intersect between, you got to make sure you're on the right function here. I'm on the blue function, so you hit enter. And then I need to be on the black function, so I'm going to scroll up until it's on the black function. You can see up here that it's y3. I hit enter. It's going to find that value. Notice it's a new x value now. Before x was 5.4, now x equals 7.7. .7. So what I can do is I can quit, and if I want to, I can store x now into like alpha b. Now that would be the bigger value, right? So I just need to, you know, you can do this. You can go alpha b minus alpha a, and that should be one of the choices. Please be one of the choices. 2.280, there we go, choice D. So the next problem, we're on problem number 21 here. Let's get this all situated. Uh, they basically said the table presents the values and exponential regression is used. What value f of 1.5 predicted by the model? Oh, well, we gotta put this in our lists. So let's hit stat, then we hit enter. Now let's put these in the list. So we're gonna go negative two, and then negative one, and then one, and then two, and then we gotta put the y values in. So we're gonna go over to L2. We got 10, 15, 40, and 56. Easy peasy. Now we have to do our regression. So after we type that in, I always like to quit. Second quit. And then we go into stat. We go over to calculate up here. And we look for exponential regression. Scroll up to choice zero. It says exponential regression. And then we have L1 and L2. And by the way, I like to go down to where it says store the regression equation. I'm going to hit vars, which stands for variables. I go over to the right. And then all my function variables are in there. Yeah, I want to store it into y1 because I'm going to need that. So when I do that, check this out, I get values for a and b. But when I hit the y equals, the equation is right in there. So now from the home screen, I can just hit vars again, go to the right, hit function. And I want that y1 again because that's where that function is. And I want to find f of 1.5. Is that what they told us? f of 1.5. We're going to plug that in, and guess what? That should be an answer choice when we're all done. 46.767. They rounded it. Great job, College Board. You rounded it. That's choice A. Let's look at question 22. This one's a little bit different where they give us a trick function here, and they say, uh, let's say it's the minutes of daylight, and they want to know if the number of minutes is increasing at a decreasing rate or decreasing at a decreasing rate or increasing at an increasing rate or decreasing at an increasing rate. This is a crazy question. Let's do this. Let's plug it into our calculator. I'm going to try a little trick, see if this works. Let's plug this in. We'll hit y equals. I'm going to clear, you know what? I'm going to clear all this stuff out. And so here we are, and I made sure to use a fraction. If you don't use the fraction, you got to make sure you use parentheses there. Man, that's tricky. But I typed it all in. I think I'm okay. And they want to ask, 
about the behavior at day 150. So check this out. I'm going to go to my table, but the normal table, don't be that kid that scrolls down to 150. That is crazy. We're gonna go up to where it says table set. We're gonna start our table at 150. I'm just gonna take a look at it. Let's just see what it says. If I change that table start to 150 and I take a look at it, let's just see what's happening here. So I'm gonna put 150 in the middle. First off, can we see if we are increasing or decreasing? You can notice in this area, the numbers are getting bigger, so it's increasing. We've already narrowed it down to either A or C. It's either increasing at an increasing rate or decreasing at a, or it's increasing at a decreasing rate. Oh my goodness, it's increasing, that's my point. So it's increasing, we gotta figure out whether it is increasing in smaller and smaller and smaller intervals. That would be at a de decreasing rate or if it's increasing at larger and larger and larger intervals. So I'm just gonna look at this, look at this. This works out well for us. I think this is probably why they picked 150. Cause look, it's exactly one unit, boom. It's one right there. And if you look before it, see the one before it? It is greater than one unit. So it's going from greater to one unit to one unit to less than one unit. That means it is increasing at a decreasing rate. That question actually wasn't that hard if you know how to use your table. Which one was that, A? I choose A. Let's go to 23. Okay, let's look at number 23 here. They give us a weird function. This is not something you've probably seen before. It tells you the period is 2 pi, and we're talking about invertible. You know, is the in, what do we got? Provide domain of G and for Y, G is invertible. Remember, invertible means that the inverse is a function. So with our inverse trig function, sometimes we have to cut down the domain because when we flip it, we have to find the inverse. We don't want it to fail the vertical line test. We want to have only one output for each input. So let's put this in our calculator. Where did my calculator go? I lost my calculator. Oh, there it is. Sorry, people. So I put it in right here. Look, sine of x minus cosine x. Make sure I'm in radians. I go, I look at the graph. Okay, it looks like this. Here's the thing. If you're going to restrict the domain of the inverse, then you have to look at the range of the function. And the range of this function is like from right here. Can I find that minimum? I think I can calculate the minimum. Choice three. I want to find the minimum in here. And I bet you it's pretty close. Well, it's not zero, I'll tell you that much. What is it, negative 0.785? Isn't that about a fourth of pi? Isn't that about like, that's about a fourth of pi. That's three divided by four about, right? Okay, so look at our choices here. When we restrict the domain, we either have zero to pi. Look at your graph. What would zero to pi give us? Like this, it would give you from like here and then over, but there's this part down here. That's not gonna be it. Let me draw on this, bring this over. Bring it, bring the heat. All right, I'm drawing now. Look, we wanna go from here. We need to restrict this. So that when we flip the x and y values, that we we don't have something like this. This if we flipped x and y for sine, it would look like this. Oh, I did pretty good with my mouse there. But look, it fails the vertical line test. So that's why we restrict the domain. So for this weird function, which is not like a regular sine or cosine, but it's sine minus cosine. Oh, look at that. Uh, we need to restrict it from here to here. So I can narrow down our choices to either b or d, and we just have to look at their rationales. Uh, because all the values of g of x occur without repeating. That's what we want right there. Because the length of the interval is half the period. What does that got to do with anything? All right, it's choice B. This is the choice for this one, choice B. There's probably a better way to do it that's more technical. But uh, sometimes I guess, yeah, maybe that'll work for you while you're taking your test. And here is the last one that we have. Another trick question. Man, we love to, we love our trick. Hope you guys paid, a, paid attention in unit three here. Uh, so let's just read this whole thing. The ride involves 10 controlled bounces. You go up and down. The height of the X above the ground and feet can be modeled by periodic function. At time zero, it is, it's at its highest point. That's important. So at time zero, so let's just do that. It says zero, I'm gonna write that down. Zero, it's at 120. Okay, the lowest point is at a height of 20. The next time it's at its highest point is at eight. So it's at eight. It's at 120 again. That means that at four, it was at its lowest point, which is 20. And I think we have pretty much everything we need to write this function now. If I were to sketch it out, let's just sketch this. We have zero 120s, like, ooh, I'm gonna use purple. So 120, we'll just say is up here somewhere. And then by the time you get to four, then you're at like 20, but then you're back at 120 over here at eight. So let's label it eight 120. That's this point. My graphs are getting uglier. I'm starting to ramble. That's 0, 120. Now you can't read my stuff. Anyways, here we go. This looks exactly like a cosine curve. I hope, I hope that's a choice, cosine curve. Now, we just need to figure out the period here is 8. We need to figure out the value of b. So the period, remember, equals 2 pi over b. And we know the period is 8 because that's how long it takes to get from a maximum to another maximum. So we're going to say that 8, that's the period, equals 2 pi over b. So if I were to solve for b, I'm going to multiply both sides by b, and then I'll divide by 8, and I'm going to get b is going to equal 2 pi over 8, which is pi over 4. So can we answer the question yet? I didn't even look at our choices. It's definitely cosine because it starts at a max. And uh, what else we got here? It's got to be this choice right here. Look, period's pi over 4. It's choice b. All right, there you go. Did I do it? Did I make the whole thing in under 10 minutes? 
You be the judge. This is Mr. Kelly. Remember, it's nice to be important. It's more important to be nice. See ya!